San Francisco erected a statue, so Osaka severed sister city ties. Wait, what? No comfort for old women in our first story. Kyoto is now taxing visitors to its city on their accommodation stays. We'll tell you how much and why coming up. A Kumamoto City Councilwoman was kicked out of chambers for stifling a nagging cough with a lozenge. And this was before a speech. Yes, it's as stupid as it sounds, and we'll tell you all the details in a few minutes. A woman who committed suicide jumping from a building hit another person on the way down. A very sad and distressing and strange story later. And in our last story, gangsters. They're living larger and longer now. How? How about more exercise and healthier food as part of their benefit package? It's part of the code now. Stick around for the Yakuza stakeout details at the end of the show. Hi and welcome to Japan This Week, a quick recap of stories we're following on the Japan Today website for the week ending October 5th, 2018. I'm Jeff Richards, thanks for joining us and let's get right to it. Okay, our first story is nothing if not contentious. It's a sensitive subject, especially if you're Japanese. Osaka Mayor Hirofumi Yoshimura this week sent a letter to his counterpart in San Francisco. He announced that he's ending a six-decade sister city relationship with them to protest a statue honoring women forced to serve as sex workers for Japanese soldiers during World War II. The women are euphemistically referred to as comfort women. The statue was put up on city property last year by California's Korean, Chinese, and Filipino communities. A spokesman for San Francisco Mayor London Breed called Yoshimura's decision unfortunate and says the cities will remain connected through people-to-people ties. I think that's great. Lillian Singh, co-chair of the Comfort Women Justice Coalition, said breaking the relationship over a memorial is outrageous and absurd. She said it shows how afraid the Osaka mayor and the Japanese prime minister are about truth and are trying to deny history. Historians say tens of thousands of women around Asia were sent to work in Japanese military brothels during the war. Japan apologized in 1993, but the issue has remained an open rift with its neighbors, particularly South Korea, which has strong memories of Japan's colonization from 1910 to 1945. After a gradual pullback from the apology, Japan's government actually now denies that the women were forced into sexual slavery, citing a lack of official documentary proof. As expected, Japan Today readers had plenty to say on the subject. Toshihiro says, Oh, come on, Japan, wake up and smell the matcha. No matter how much you convince yourselves that the comfort women never existed for lack of concrete evidence, you can't deny what really happened. Seriously, Come clean, admit it, and accept it. War is never pretty, and people do horrible things to the other. It'll be a ton of weight off the Japanese's shoulders. Well, I I sort of agree with that. But more importantly, well, not more importantly, but also, matcha is a Japanese powdered green tea, the type that they used in traditional tea ceremonies, and uh, quite high in caffeine, I suspect, from that comment. Tokyo Inger adds, I do not think San Francisco really cares. Furthermore, I do not think San Francisco will ever ask Japan to remove the Peace Park and large exhibition in Hiroshima either. As a matter of fact, most San Franciscans, count me as one, think the Hiroshima Memorial and Peace Park should always exist so that people may be reminded and hopefully never commit this type of bombing again. I feel the same about the Comfort Women statues. Now, we also dug in for uh, views on the other side of the aisle. Um, Dwight Ryder says, As an American, I'm glad that the mayor of Osaka took the action that he did. The issue of comfort women is not an issue that seriously confronts the U.S. San Francisco had no business in erecting a statue in their memory. If Japan, Korea, the Philippines, Taiwan, and others impacted by the issue of comfort women during the war were to erect such a monument, so be it. San Francisco's action in erecting such a monument was crude, naive, and disingenuous, a common trait among Americans these days. While a very divisive subject, both the comfort women and the statues erected to memorialize them. What are your thoughts? Visit us at japantoday.com and let us know. Kyoto. This is where the shamisen music comes in. Japan's ancient capital and a very popular tourist destination these days. 
Kyoto began levying taxes this week on visitors staying at hotels, traditional inns called ryokan, and private lodgings to ease problems such as congestion and improve tourism services. Guests will now be taxed between 200 yen and 1,000 yen per night. That's about $1.75 to $8.75 US, depending on the accommodation charge. Students and their chaperones on school trips will be exempt, of course. The city is expecting to raise 4.56 billion yen annually through the tax and use that revenue for tourism promotion measures. Now, just in case you're wondering how much exactly is 4.56 billion yen, uh, well, hey Siri, how much is 4.56 billion yen in American dollars? Four billion five hundred sixty million Japanese yen is forty million twenty nine thousand four hundred ninety four dollars and eighty eight cents. Thank you for being so specific, Siri. That's oddly reassuring. Kyoto faces a chronic shortage of lodging facilities and illegal private lodgings, aka Airbnb, according to the Japanese government. Uh, you heard that from me. Have been filling the vacuum. In 2017, just over 15 million people visited the city. Now, other cities have been following suit. Kanazawa City will introduce the duty next April, and the Fukuoka City Assembly has passed an ordinance to urge its town to establish such a tax. Japan Today readers have their doubts about the levy. Nakano Guy says the tax is meant to ease congestion, but that is the exact opposite of what the government wants, which is to double the number of tourists to Japan. And one way to improve tourist services is to make more affordable lodging available. This tax does neither. Spot on. Absolutely. Tiger's Tokyo Dome calls the tax a bit of a slap in the face for tourists spending good money on travel in Japan. The benefactors of Japan's boom in tourism, retail stores, restaurants, hotels, are laughing. They are taking the profits and not putting anything back to support local infrastructure being stretched by the tourists. Okay, that. I'm sorry, that, that comment just confuses me. I mean, how would he know what the government is spending that tax money on? And I don't know, maybe he's a member of the government. So why don't you weigh in at japantoday.com? Okay, a little political news for you. You may think politics in the United States is pretty partisan at this juncture in time. Or perhaps you're British or European and you're consumed with the Brexit negotiations. Well, let's take a little look at some political news at play here in Japan. And we're going to give this one the dignity that it deserves. Last November, Kumamoto City Councilwoman Yuka Ogata was at the center of a harsh controversy when she brought her baby daughter to a session of the city assembly. No, no, no. This week, there was an even bigger commotion during a plenary session. As Ogata approached the podium for her turn to speak, the assembly chairman asked what she had in her mouth. Very adult. Uh, Ogata, <laughs> Ogata politely replied that it was a cough drop. She had it because she didn't want to disrupt the proceedings. At that, the hall was immediately filled with angry shouts of objection, including, Make her take out the cough drop! And, Eating and drinking is against the rules! Th those are my old men shouting voices, and that's your tax dollars hard at work right there. Ogata says she had been experiencing a cough for the past few days, so she decided to pop in a cough drop for the meeting. She probably didn't want to disrupt the proceedings and also didn't want to wake up those sleeping old assemblymen. But rules say members can't eat or drink anything during a session, so scheduled proceedings were suspended while a disciplinary committee meeting was convened. Uh, actually, there is no rule banning eating or drinking on the floor, but more on that in a second. This meeting took eight hours. Eight hours, despite the fact that the whole day's plenary session was originally only supposed to take two. Once again, your tax dollars, hard at work. The committee decreed Ogata was in violation of a stipulation saying that members must respect the dignity of the council. That's another one of my old men voice. And requested that she read out an apology drafted by them. Ogata refused, and this further upset the other council members, who then instigated a motion for her to be removed from the meeting. Ogata was the only dissenting vote, with the rest of the council, including its female members, all voting to have her removed. And so she was. You can imagine what Japan Today readers thought. 
Well, don't imagine, I'm going to tell you. Bintaro calls it ridiculous. How many of these fossils are regularly sleeping while in attendance, I wonder? <laughs> I wonder too. I, I figure any of them over 65 are probably all sleeping. And from maybe perhaps yes, these old fools obviously have it in for her for making them look foolish over the baby issue. They were just waiting for something, anything, to stick the boot into her. Shameful acting from people who are supposed to represent us. Ah. <sighs> Truly ridiculous. As we said in telling you that story, it, this is your tax dollars hard at work. These these people sound like junior high school students. This is absolutely ridiculous. I'm at a loss for words on this one. I can't, you know, I can't find my my voice. I <coughs> I think um <coughs> I think I need a a cough drop. But what do you think? Why don't you visit us in Japan today? And- Well, this next one is a little dark. It's a little dark and strange and depressing. You're probably well aware that Japan has a very high suicide rate compared to other countries. In 2017, about 22,000 people killed themselves, according to health ministry figures. Well, this week, one unfortunate woman added to this year's statistics when she jumped from the 8th floor stairwell of a commercial building in Shinjuku, Tokyo, and hit a man below, seriously injuring him. The woman died from her injuries, while the man suffered a broken right arm. Police said there was no ID in the woman's bag, but she appeared to be in her late teens or early 20s. The man, who is in his 20s, happened to be visiting Tokyo from Kita Kyushu. The incident occurred in the Kabukicho Red Light District. Police found the woman's shoes and her bag at the spot where she jumped. Now, a curious feature of jumpers in Japan is that they almost always remove their shoes before taking the leap. Now, there are a few theories as to why Japanese people remove their shoes before committing such a final act, but here's, here's just a few. So as not to carry dirt from this world to the next, because it's what they saw on TV um, here in Japan. It's a cliche way to indicate that a person has committed suicide by leaving shoes on a cliff or the roof of a building. Uh, because that's what samurai used to do, I guess, when samurai had shoes, and because they don't want their soul to stay grounded here on Earth. That's just a little food for thought. It's a weighty story here uh, and a weighty subject. But let's hear from Japan Today readers. Tekal comments, Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem, especially when you are so young. Hard to see, but there are usually signs of depression. Keep an eye on on your friends. Absolutely. And a very spot on prescient comment there. And here's a suggestion from Smith in Japan. With the amount of people who do swan dives, this was bound to happen. They need to start putting up those safety nets. There is far too much of this nonsense. You'll still get people trying to kill themselves, but they won't hurt others this way. Personally, this is something I haven't been able to come to grips with living in Japan. Both the high suicide rate here and the propensity for people to jump from buildings and cliffs. Um, I think that Japan needs much more mental health care and support in that regard, and perhaps less tall buildings. Well, thank you for sticking with us this far into the podcast, and we're going to make it worth your while. We're going to talk about one of our favorite topics here in Japan this week, the Yakuza, or the Japanese Mafia. Now, one does not ordinarily associate these extravagantly tattooed and missing-fingered gentlemen as the type of people espousing healthy and long lives, especially for those on the bottom rung. The hours are long, the tasks arduous, and turf battles with rival syndicates have been known to reduce one's lifespan considerably. Well, writing in Asahi Geno, which is a Japanese weekly tabloid magazine, Tomoyuki Ueno, author of a book titled Yakuza Life, says that most gang offices are now keeping dumbbells and other gym equipment on hand and making sure their members eat healthy food. Now, I know what you're thinking out there. No, the dumbbells are not the gang members. They're actual fitness equipment. The dumbbells could have practical uses, of course, such as breaking bones or keeping the chimpira, those are the muscle or the lower level gangsters, strong enough to do so. The story also says bosses are known to be real gourmands. Some rank and file gang members are trained as full on cooks so they can prepare healthy dishes using the freshest vegetables possible for their leaders. 
Asigeno points out that the bosses don't have to do nasty things anymore and they can just sit there and let the money roll in, which makes for a longer and healthier life. Japan Today reader Backpacking Nepal admires their lifestyle. They sure are healthier than salarymen, gambling, traveling, sex, love, style, etc., all with less stress than what most salarymen do at high levels. NCIS Reruns is a bit dubious about the story. Surely full-body tattoos and severing digits can't be conducive to health. Hepatitis used to be common as well. Oddly specific comment there, NCIS Reruns, but... Yes, I, I kind of concur with you. Um, just a note, if you're if the missing fingers thing is a little over your head, uh, here in Japan, Japanese gangsters often cut off their fingers and gift them to a boss to show fealty after making a mistake. I guess it's pretty easy to tell who the dumbbells are. I need to cue a, a rip shot there. And it's sounding a little like something out of the end of Goodfellas when they're cooking those wonderful meals in prison. But uh, I'm not, uh, I don't have a criminal record. Just so, I just want to get that off. Just, if you have some inside information, let us know at japantoday.com. And that was a quick recap of the news from Japan this week. Just a note that we will be away next week, but we'll return on Friday, October 19th. Thanks to Japan Today editors for curating the stories. Thanks to Kamasami Kong for all his production assistance and bad jokes. Thanks, as always, to you, all of our listeners, readers, and commenters out there. Please keep them coming. You can find links to all of the news that is mentioned in this podcast in the show notes, so have a look below. Since the news from Japan never stops, Follow us on Twitter at, at Japan Today for all of the breaking stories. You can tweet at me directly at, at Jeff W. Richards, and you can join our Facebook page, forward slash Japan Today, for more news and comments, because you just can't get enough of them. Of course you can, and you should, visit the Japan Today website at any time at japantoday.com. If you have a question or a comment about the show or the website, we're always happy to hear from you. Get in touch with us by email at podcast at japantoday.com and we'll try to answer it on another episode. You can get Japan This Week at whatever podcast store you shop at or if you're listening on an iPhone, hey Siri, subscribe me to the Japan This Week podcast. Just to confirm, would you like to subscribe to the podcast Japan This Week by Japan Today? Yes. If you find our show informative or at least entertaining, please leave us a rating or review on Apple or Google Podcasts. From the Japan Today newsroom at G Plus Media in Tokyo, I'm Jeff Richards, and join us again next week for a quick recap of Japan's biggest and smallest stories. Sayonara, folks. <laughs>